Yo, what's good, y'all? You dub back here again here in 2019. Let's get it for what's left of it anyway. And y'all know I say I'm steadily bringing y'all more new fresh content. Now, there, if you're a fan of my channel, if you're here to this channel, you're a fan of fiction more than likely. Also consider at least 80% of the content I do is dealing in fiction. You're also probably a fan, a lot of y'all, I know a lot of y'all are a fan of the martial arts like I am. You know, whether you're boxing, UFC, Taekwondo, Aikido, Jeet Kune Do, you know, you name it. As well as, you know, let's talk about armed combat. No one really talks about armed combat. I know, for example, I'm sub to Shadowversity. Just watch, as I'm recording this video, just watch a couple of his videos dealing with uh, Star Wars, his issues with certain things. Now, I don't always agree. And that's the thing. You got to understand with YouTubers and with any person's perspective, people say my opinion. No, no. Understand that people come from different perspectives. They come from different backgrounds and stuff. So you have to take that into consideration, especially those when we're talking about the martial arts, whether armed combat or unarmed martial arts. You, I remember having a discussion, and I'm putting this in here because it's relevant to this topic that we're having here because no one ever really talks about why this actually exists. And I'll explain a backdrop as to how this current video comes to be. So, remember talking with a dude, uh, it was at a GameStop, it was checking out to see if they had any PC games and stuff. But ended up getting a uh, conversation with a few guys, and we were having about video games and different stuff. But one of the gentlemen, like me, was about the martial arts. Now, he comes from a Tang Sudo background. Which is similar, for those who don't know, similar to Taekwondo, but different. Okay, uh, Tang Sudo, you see, I want to say it's more like Wang uh, from uh, Tekken. Okay, he has a Tang Sudo kind of fighting style. Okay, um, but anyways, and I was explaining to him how, because he talked about when he was younger, he went for a certain specific block on a kick. And I'm like, I wouldn't even have thought of it like him. I would have did possibly... Eight other things other than what he tried to do with his defense. He went, I didn't want to try to do something because I would have broke the guy's leg. I'm like, I wouldn't even have thought necessary to even go that far to break a dude's leg. Okay? Could have tackled him. Could have. Pretty much, he he ended up messing himself up because he blocked with a back fist. Which, it was against a sidekick. I don't know why he thought that. Even in the sparring, I don't know what went through his, the young man's mind. Um you know, when he was a kid, but I would have thought to tackle, I would have thought to jab, I would have thought, um, shoot up, releasing and kick myself, or low kick, I, you know, there were multiple things I would have thought before I would have ever thought of blocking with a, with a back fist, if anything, block with your forearm, you see what I'm saying? So, I bring all that up as to the subject we have here today, Itoriu versus Nitoriu. Okay, one sword style versus two sword style. Now, if you like me, you know that two sword style look nice and cool. Always was cool. Always wanted to like main characters with it because it's sick. But you see it so often, and I'm going to bring up like One Piece. Look at most of the best swordsmen in this series of One Piece. Dracula Hawkeye's Miyok, the world's greatest swordsman. Itoriu. Admiral Fujitori Isho. Itoriu. Red haired Shanks. Itoriu. Big Mama Charlotte Linlin. Itoriu. It seemed like Roger, the Pirate King himself, Goldie, Goldie Roger, was Itoriu. Um, I know, I know. Shoot. Dark King Silver's Rayleigh. Itoriu. Gandhi Gorose. Gorose seems like he's Itoriu as well. Most of the top swordsmen are Itoriu. Zoro is one of the only top 10 swordsmen in the series of One Piece. That goes beyond that. His base style is Nitoriu. He does, his weakest style is Itoriu. But we do see him use Itoriu a lot for a lot of reasons. And we're going, we're going to address the pros and cons and actually see if we can come to a conclusion which is actually better. If we can. Okay, that's what we're here for, right? But the thing is, why this is even a discussion? I remember there were some years ago, and I was, I, you know how I am, if you know me. 
you know, if you know my channel, you know I dig deep and think on the whys. And I'm sitting in back and going like, bro, why is it that we don't see? Because it would make sense that people use Nitoru or some some variation. Musashi Miyamoto is made famous for his uh, Nitoru style when it came to the short and the long blade. I believe it's a Shunto. I believe the short sword and in the long blade. Um, shoot, we see it even in Star Wars. Most of them are Itoryu users. I'm talking about your best. Yoda, Mace Windu, Anakin, as well as Darth Vader. Luke is an Itoryu. Uh, Count Dooku, you know, Darth um, Sidious. Even Dar uh, Darth Sidious, Darth Tyrannus, who's Count Dooku. Uh, now, Darth Maul is a little bit different because he has a dual, uh, dual bladed lightsaber. Um, you name it. There are very few Nitoru users. You know, uh, Sh I think it's Shoto Form 1. I know, uh, Kit Fisto uses Form 1. He uses Duel. He mainly uses Duel. Uh, he can use Nitoru, obviously. But he mainly does, uh, Duel, if I'm not mistaken. I know, uh, what's her name? I think Asajj, Asajj Ventures? I think that's who I'm thinking of. She uses, uh, mainly Duel, if I'm not mistaken. But we see most of them. So, it, it, once again, you sit in here and then you think historically most of them are using Itoryu. When it comes to samurai and, and such. When it comes to knights. So, it, it gets you to think, why do they use Itoryu instead of Nitoryu? Forgetting sword costs or anything like that. Like, if you're wealthy, why? Alright. So, let's look at... Before we go into the pros and cons, let's look at the styles themselves, all right? And before we do that, I know I'm saying it before a lot, but before we do that, I'll bring my perspective um, on answering this from actual just kind of ish training, okay? Or on my own, okay? I was at a dojo that was uh, Sensei, Sensei James, Mr. James, um, my one of my dad's friends and martial arts uh, teammates and partners from back when they were young, right? Remember being in a dojo, and he had a, he had various types of blades. I don't think he actually had a. If he did have a real sword, I didn't I didn't mess with that. But he did have kendo swords. Okay, not them kendo sticks, them actual kendo swords. And I can do a, a video about kendo, and I believe I will, and how effective it can actually be. But he had a, a kendo sword. All right, and. The lesson I learned from that, okay, number one, blades are heavy. Depending on what type of blades you have, blades can be heavy, okay? Learning how to, every blade has a different point of weight distribution. And your skill, <coughs> excuse me, your skill with the blade showcases your experience. Now, why does that matter? Because in order to go from a singular blade to a dual blade requires that it, it's it's similar but different to not just the skill but the mentality as well. But I'll get into the mentality in a second. But the skill is now you're not only handling one thing, but you're handling two. And if we're talking about actual not just kendo blades, okay, not just wooden blades, if we're talking about steel blades, you're talking about two separate entities, which makes it double doubly dangerous okay now when i say mentality part of it is how do you perceive things it's kind of like a snowboard versus a skier different perceptions some people find skiing easier some people find snowboarding easier it's two different things you're not just focusing on one there is and then there is he told you with one you know depending on the type of sword there's rapiers there are katanas there are such there's a one hand and then there's two, also the size of the blade, okay? When it comes to uh, Nitoryu, two, you don't want longer blades. When With Itor, you can have a long, big old battle act. I mean, big old barad sword, right? Okay, same kind of thing would happen with an actual axe as well, if you, if you want to go at that. But we'll just stick to swords at this moment. So... You can't have, you have shorter blades and a, or one longer blade and one shorter blade when it comes to dual wielding, okay? So that that's part of it. Then, not only do you have the experience, the mentality, you have it to where what is comfortable. 
And for most people, having one sword is a hell of a lot more comfortable. When I went to swing with a singular blade, I noticed how difficult it was. Then just one and two. Not see, not, it's like it's like a being a drummer. Drummer or an expert drummer has to be able to do multiple things simultaneously and becoming fluid with it. Because a blade, a weapon is supposed to be an extension of oneself, even one soul if you want to go that far. So that's part of it. Now, let's look at the pros and cons of each. Pro to Etorio style, one source style. One, simple. Simplicity. You cannot beat simply. Let, let, me, let me explain, ladies and gentlemen, why simplicity cannot be beaten. Okay? People want to get fancy. The greatest karatekas, the greatest grandmaster karatekas, and if you are into King and Ashura, you know Kuroke Ginsai. You know Orochi Dopo from the Baki series. Okay? Look at a guy like Jiren. Simplicity. The greatest karatekas. They're they're looking for one strike. They're not looking. They can do all the great rage hands, spear hands, and all that. But they're looking. They got done. Donna. Simplicity, mastery of the fundamentals. That's what it's about with Etorio. Uh, also, everything. Not only is it simpler. You can concentrate more on on your opponent with the blocks and, and, and the strikes, okay? Efficiency. No all over your... You don't leave yourself open. It's like a great... A boxer who has a great jab. Just great jab. Just great jab. Just keep them off. Look at Muhammad Ali. Look, look at Sugar Ray Leonard, Sugar Ray Robinson. Look at uh, the Brown Bomber, Joe, uh, Joe Lewis. Look at Lennox Lewis. You know, a boxer with a Vladimir Klitschko, Floyd Money Mayweather Jr., a boxer with a great jab. That's kind of what you have with Itoriu style. You have it to where it's very, very efficient, almost mechanical to the way where you're fight you can be fighting a machine. Okay. Um, what's another thing? You have simplicity, you have efficiency. You have it to where there's not really wasted movement. You have it to where and with one source, I believe it or not, you can have a bunch of different angles that you can attack from. Don't think just because you have one blade that that limits you. It really doesn't. Um, if you're a fan of Hunter Hunter, was it Nobunaga, Nobunaga? I believe homeboy's name was the part of the Phantom Troop that that three uh, his end that was uh, three meters around him, and he can strike from anywhere. That kind of thing. And if you're a fan, I'm pretty sure you've come across all kinds of stuff with, with swordsmen throughout your uh, adventures in fiction. You see it all the time. <clears throat> They're so damn good that they can sense and the blade does the work for them. Now, what are the, the pros of dual, dual willing? More. More variety, more versatility. Another thing, rarity. There are not many. Nitoriu users. Another one, intimidation. Believe it or not, in a fight, intimidation is a massive thing because what a lot of people don't understand about the, the fight game is, and even more so than all areas of life, the fight game, the mind. 95% is the mind. Why was Big George Foreman and Iron Mike Tyson so feared? Because of their presence. When Muhammad Ali defeated Sonny Liston. It destroyed a myth. When Holly Holmes defeated uh, Ronda Rousey, Rowdy Ronda Rousey, it destroyed that myth. Cyborg, when Amanda Nunez defeated Cyborg, that mentality, the air, the aura, it makes someone larger than life. It makes them scarier. Versatility, um, the ability to, you know, present more things, and I mentioned rarity, not only just intimidation, you have the fact of, if you have a high level Nichoryu user, you're in trouble, I don't care who you are, why, because now, not only do you have, you, you also have a wider range, each of you, you see where the strike is coming, right, you see where the strike is coming, you see where the strike is coming, Nichoryu can strike you from multiple 
simultaneously. So you have more options and more cumbersome. Now I have to block two blades instead of just one, which is a hell of a lot more dangerous. All right, so let's look at the cons of each. The cons of each order. Simplicity is great if you're a master. The problem is we see Zoro, how he runs through folk. How? Because it's limited. Limitations. Now, don't blame the blade. Blame the user. It's like Sir Crocodile said about devil fruits. You can say it about anything in life. Never blame the weapon. A martial art. Oh, it doesn't work. No, a martial art can be the deadliest thing on the planet. All right. Aikido, crane style, taekwondo, boxing, pancreation. Some you can say are better than this and now you can you can debate. But listen, bro, if you're fighting a grandmaster, for example, Eat Mon, grandmaster of uh, Wing Chun, is wrecking through just about anybody. Just about anybody. Unless they're of an adequate skill level. Then, he, you know, weight and, and, and other, you know, other factors come into it. But it's the skill of the user. And for most Etorio users, the simplicity, they don't, they're not forced to train as hard. They're not forced to focus as much. Nitorio fighters, part of it, they, they do it is the challenge. And that challenge makes them better. Look at Zoro. Part of the reason he's so great at a young age, and yes, I'm using a fictional example, but it's true because we don't really have swordsmanship out here today. It's true. Look at Zoro. He came up. He doesn't have a devil fruit. He ain't one of these grand hockey masters. But he's still damn good at what he does because he took on the challenge. And he also has the Santoyu three sword style, which is a whole separate topic um, for another video to address with. Limitations. When a fighter goes into a thing and doesn't know and encounters new and doesn't know how to adapt, that's what you potentially can have. Uh, not just limitations. The ability to the defense. The defense is is kind of open. If you think about samurai, they could be gotten by shinobi. Okay, I'm not even just talking about explosive. Some of the best skilled warriors in history could be gotten by less trained fighters. And why would that be? Because they were open. It leaves too many openings, potentially. Okay? To all kinds of, from kunai, shuriken, you name it, to a dual wielder, uh, to, to someone with a spear, to some, all kinds of weapons. It's a lot more open with the defense, which is not good if you're not solid with the defensive game. Okay? Um, another con of Itoryu that I find is not only does it have limitations, depending on the blade, it can be really cumbersome. Really cumbersome. You can't have cumbersome blades when it comes to Nitoryu. You just might as well don't even try to pick up a blade. Pick up a rock. Because it, it, you're, you're just going to die. You're going to get whooped in combat. The thing is, when Nitoryu, you think because, let's say, a two-sword blade, a big old massive broadsword, or a big old massive, you know, two-handed katana, strike hard and strong. First of all, you open yourself up, but strike hard and strong. Huh. 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 Now, that look all nice and flashy, but guess what? It's not effective on the battlefield. Again, unless you know what you're doing. So, it opens you up to get this, this foolishness, really. Now, when it comes to Nitorium, obviously, I'll mention one of the cons, is too much going on. Too much going on. You have to focus on more than one blade, all right? Um, so, that, that leaves you open right there. Uh, another thing is, bigger chance of self-harm. You have two things that can chop your limbs off, cut you up. So that that's a that's a big one. Um, when it also comes is more complex. Complexity 
is not all what you want in combat. Now, it, it seems combat is a paradoxical thing. So you hear me say that I'm for, you know, I love Luffy for his creative, his creative, even not to drag Neil. You know, I get on uh, Kurosaki Ichigo and what St. Kane throw in is, get some good tension, get some good tension, get some good tension, get some good tension. No creativity, right? But then again, you have the Bruce Lee concept of, I fear a man who's thrown the same punch 10,000 times rather than a man who's thrown 10,000 different punches a single time. Okay? And you have the example of Chairman Isaac Natero with the, the prayer. Okay? So, complexity is not the same as creativity. Let that not be confused. For example, if you were talking with, let's say, computers, okay? If you're like me, you don't need the most complex, over-the-top gaming computer as of yet. You don't need a $3,000 computer if that's what you're costing. You only need a few hundred dollars. Because it does enough for what you need. So for a lot of fighters, they don't want that extra play because it's more than they need. That's just excessive. And it compounds the issues. So keep that in mind. So overall, what's actually better? The cop-out is to say it depends on the individual, obviously. But what's actually better? At the end of the day... I still come in saying ni toru, but for a grandmaster, for a, a the highest level that you can be, itoru. For someone who isn't the most competent, ni toru. Nitori. Obviously, you have to be really competent for both, or else you're getting wrecked with both. But I think Nitoriu comes back to the very situation of someone who recognizes his weakness. And I say weakness in quotes, okay? Recognizes that he isn't the sharpest technical fighter. Recognizes that he isn't you know, maybe the physically superior fighter recognizes that he's not the fastest fighter, that he's at a disadvantage. But he recognizes that he's very, very creative in his mind. He recognizes that I can use this other blade to cover up any flaws in my game. All right. It's like the fighter who who is unorthodox. OK. And you could pick whoever you want to in MMA, boxing, or whatever martial arts you can think of. Even in pro wrestling. The fighter who does all this seemingly excessive stuff. But it works. And people are like, but that goes against the, the, unconv the, the conventional. Because he is unconventional. He is unorthodox. He's not technically sound like that. But because he recognizes his weakness, he turns, and, my, and part of my philosophy on strength, my ideology on strength, excuse me, is turn your weaknesses into strengths so that you have no weaknesses, right? So that your weaknesses become your strongest points. So for the Nitoriu user, I would say that it was developed for people who, whether deception, who, who were well in tune with themselves. As far as the Itoriu, it's very simple. When I say for the Grandmasters, because the grandmasters may go back to the Itori. I mean, hell, how many times do we see, and I bring up Zoro a lot, right? Because we all love Zoro. But how many times do we see Zoro post time skip using Itori? We very rarely see him pull out Nitori or, or, or Santori. Very rarely. And Nitori is his base fighting style that he learned as a kid. Because he becomes so damn good with the blade that all he needs is one. All he needs is one. He doesn't need it. I mean, we know it's, it's real serious when he pulls out that Santorio, but all he needs is one. And that's just what it is. I, and I'll, I'll end it like this. I've said that, you know, some people want the fancy and entertaining one to fight. Listen, 
people would hate would hate either fight me or hate uh and I'm a, I'm one who's very unorthodox, all right? But if all I have to do to win a fight is to throw a jab all night long, guess y'all know what the hell I'm doing? I'm not throwing a hooks and straights and I'm not throwing uppercuts. I'm throwing that jab all night long until you force me to change it up. And those are the grandmasters. The ones who dictate the pace, the ones who dictate how the fight's going to go. So overall, like I said, for most people, Nitorium. But for those select elite, Itoryu. And you can say, well, isn't that not picking? No, it's picking Nitorium. Because <laughs> most of us aren't the grandmasters. But you will, again, for the best of the best, Itoryu. It's just what it is. Unexpected one and like, comment, subscribe. Tell me your thoughts. Let me know. Let me know if you want me to, do, and I'm planning to do more weapons discussion, but let me know if you want me to do any more topics such as these. And uh, till next time, y'all, have a beautiful day, beautiful night. Peace.